Welcome to another Watch Me Wholesale episode. The way this works is I randomly choose a market, then I find a distressed property for sale, I analyze and crunch the numbers, and then I call and make an offer. All of that and more, coming up. This video is brought to you by 10K Club, a program that pays you $10,000 for finding ugly houses. Learn more at my10kcheck.com. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton, and I went from dead broke to millionaire flipping houses. And after doing a thousand deals, I created this channel to help you master the art of wholesaling and flipping so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Okay, so I've got 10 random markets chosen here, and I'm gonna go ahead and spin this wheel, and we're gonna see who the winner is. All right, New Brunswick, New Jersey, let's go find a deal. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to Redfin right now, and I'm gonna do this on Redfin. Now, if you don't have Redfin in your market, you can do the same thing on Zillow. On the Watch Me Wholesale shows, I, I go between Zillow and Redfin all the time. Those are kind of my two favorite go-tos. But this one, let's try on Redfin, and I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna search New Brunswick, and it's gonna give me an outline of kind of like the New Brunswick greater market. But that's, I wanna kind of look at a little bit more of an area, so I'm gonna hit Remove Outline, and I'm gonna look at kind of all of these areas, even outside of the direct New Brunswick. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to more filters. I'm gonna click house. So we just look at single family. I'm gonna switch this to, I'm gonna leave it on for sale. And then I'm gonna click right here where it says fixer uppers only. Now this is a really cool feature that Redfin has where it will search all of the actives and it will identify distressed properties that they think are in the fixer upper kind of category and then serve those up in a list. So it found five of them that we're gonna look at. Uh, if you do this on Zillow, it doesn't have that feature, but I created a master list of all of the keywords that you can search for manually. I'll give that to you for free. I'll put the link in the description below, but you can use, you can search one keyword at a time. So like fixer upper, um, investor, TLC, handyman, all those kinds of keywords that will let you know that it's probably a distressed property. So now what I'm gonna do is, I've got Fixer Upper, I'm gonna click Apply, and then it gives me a list of these actives right now. Sometimes I'll look at the ones that are the newest, and I'll try to get right on those, and ideally, as soon as they come out, you call and you go after it, or sometimes I'll go after the oldest, which maybe it's been sitting out there forever, finally they're motivated to get something done, and they'll entertain a low offer. So either way is a, is a good strategy. And so yeah, I'll just go through the list right here and start looking for a good one. And let's just pick this one right here, the second one down, it's on 45 Carmen. So if I click on this, it's gonna open it up, it says it's a two bedroom, one bath, 876. And check this out guys, it says, this is a rehab or cash deal. House is as is, needs work. So lots of detail there, but that's all we need to know, right? It tells us right there that this is a cash only type of property. And let's take a quick look at the pictures. So obviously this is an older home. Looks like it's got some cracks right here. Hopefully there's no foundation issues. It's a barn style kind of home. I'm not crazy about the curb appeal, uh, but it looks like it's on a big yard. And it is, I mean, look how big this yard is right here next to this house, which is, Kind of a big deal out here because most everything I see is uh, pretty tight neighbor, pretty tight lots. But taking a look at this property, looks like it's carpet, looks like it's paint, and a kitchen. So you can see there's carpet in the kitchen. Uh, that's no good. So we're going to want to do cabinets, counters, and flooring. And that looks kind of like there's some kind of roof repair going that went on or something appliances for sure, bathroom needs some work. And notice this, it's got a radiator there. So it's on like a boiler. Look how old that thing is, look how old the water heater is. So for sure this is gonna need a furnace, maybe some forced air, that's kind of a pricey thing to do. Maybe we can just leave that. I don't, I'll have to spend a little more time later. But for now, I just wanna get kind of to a ballpark number. So the rest of the house looks pretty good. There's a deck, that's nice. So I'm thinking this, this is feeling to me like around a $25,000 rehab. It's only 875 feet. So let's do this. I'm gonna go to my deal analyzer now. This is a tool that I built specifically for crunching the numbers. I'm gonna put 876 on the square foot. Then I'm gonna put 25,000 on the rehab number. 
And then the next thing we need to do is comp the property and put those numbers in. So let's go back to our property. I'm gonna right click and click duplicate. That gives me two tabs. I'm gonna to go to the second tab and then I'm gonna click on this map right here. And it shows me where it's at on the map, which is there's Franklin. So it's like north of Franklin right here. And, but then I'm gonna click right here, map nearby homes for sale. And it gives it to me right there. And I'm gonna zoom out because now it's showing me comps. There we go, so we're right there. And now I'm gonna go switch this to sold because we wanna comp it. I'm gonna go back six months and I'm gonna put a maximum of 1,000 feet. I don't wanna see anything bigger than 1,000 square feet because we're only 800 and something feet. So that brings it way down to just a handful of comps. So this one up here is the highest one, it looks like at 315, but it's, it's a really well done, nice ranch. Open floor plan. I mean, it's not totally updated, but it's got, it, it looks pretty nice. Um, then we got a 285, that's another ranch. Not, no pictures. Another, so here's a 275, what's going on here? Okay, no pictures on that one, can't even see the front of the house. And then 265 is again another ranch. So we're, we're not really any of these because we're more of that, that two-story kind of barn look. So these have way nicer curb appeal, but you know, there's no inventory, it's got a big lot. So I think I'm gonna go with kind of in between all of these and stick with 275 as a sale price. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and update this to put in 275. So I'm gonna put, so it's about 315 bucks a foot, gets me 275.9 as an ARV. That's the price we can sell it for once fixed up. 25,000 in work. And I'm gonna leave that at eight and five. And let's say a flipper wants to make 25,000 and then I want to wholesale it for 15,000. I would need to buy this thing for 175. It's at 270. So I'm a hundred thousand dollars underneath where it's listed. Now you might think waste of time. Don't call, don't make an offer. I never think that way. I always call and I always make the offer and I, I really want to be open-minded and talk to the agent because sometimes I can find out a whole lot of information. Again, I did this very fast. I'm using limited information. But if I can talk to that agent, maybe they'll give me an insight on some things I don't quite see right now that would change my numbers or make this a deal or I could raise the price or whatever. So we won't know that until we call the agent and make the offer. So I'm gonna, right now, I'm gonna look up who this real estate agent is that's on the listing. It's usually right here on Redfin. And then we're gonna call that agent and make our offer. Let's do it. Hello? Yes, hi, is this April? Yes, hi. Hi, April, this is Jerry, how are you? Good. Good, good, do you have a minute? I wanna to talk to you about 45 Carmen Street. Sure, have you seen it? No, I've just seen it on Redfin. Okay. But I do a lot of rehabs, so, um, you know, I kinda of have an idea what I need to do to it. Okay, have you driven by? No. Oh, okay. What can you tell me about it? Um, it just needs work. It's kind of small, especially the upstairs. Uh huh. I guess that person would have to consider expanding. It's got a decent lot. Is it a double lot? Um, I don't think so, but you know, you never know because you might be able to get a variance or at least make the house bigger. Yeah, it's got that big yard on this on the if you're facing the house to the right of it, it looks like a big yard. Um, no. Well, it's not that big. It's more big in the back though. Okay. I mean, I you have the lot size. Let me tell you what that is. Instead of one second. I mean, I'm just looking at it on on the street map and there's you know, not a house right next to it, like most of the houses. Um, yeah, there's some space. Um, uh, is it a is it um, one bedroom down, one bedroom up, or both bedrooms up, or how's the floor plan? It's one big bedroom and one tiny um, bedroom area. The downstairs might have some potential because it's got an interesting layout. 
like I said, you, you probably won't be looking at expanding it. So that's 80 by one, 164 size lot. Yeah, good size lot. So it's like a... So tell me your thought process. So, so I'm looking at this as a flip. And so tell me your thought process, because I've looked at comps in the neighborhood that are under a thousand feet. You know, so if I were to come in and buy it, fix it up, resell it, what would it sell for if it were fixed up as a, you know, even if you add a bedroom, but if you're under a thousand feet, that's kind of your competition, right? Whatever, whatever else sells for under a thousand feet. Would you agree? If, if it's really nice and you have uh, three bedrooms and two baths, you know, you can get decent price for it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't look at three two. I don't know if you've got space for that. But if I look, if I just look at homes under a under a thousand, you know, there's 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 one for two seventy five, one for two sixty five. Those are the highest two. There's another for two eighty five. That's a four bedroom, but it's eight eighty four. So they must be tiny rooms. But like I like this comp right next to it for two sixty five, but it's a two bath, so it's a two bedroom, two bath, but it's pretty nice. It's like nicely done, you know. So that, but that's without spending any money on it. That's what they're selling for. They're they're the nice ones are selling where you're at list price. So I'm I guess I'm trying to understand where where you're at. You've been on the market for about forty days. I know, but she doesn't give a lot of access. She um won't allow a lot of showing so because she's working and she won't let it be shown unless she's there so i had it block law for the last week or so uh-huh realistic number she turned down 245 she'd probably take that now but the guy is gone okay anyway, what were you thinking of offering on this property well i mean so like if i run my numbers I, i'm looking at it as a 275 back end after i fix it up because there's there's just nothing selling i mean you can't get over over that for more than for under a thousand feet unless i'm unless i'm unless you know something i don't but i'm just looking at solds all up and down that area there's one house the highest house that you can find up by franklin that's um it got 315 but it's like it's not like a barn style look house. It's a it's an open ranch, really open. Okay, what are you thinking of offering? What was your number? Yeah, I'm just that's where I'm getting to it. So I'm I, if I spend you know 25 and just go in there and do a cosmetic, which would be the flooring, paint, kitchen, bath, just that, not expand, not do anything else. You know, I'm I still need to be down closer to around 200 or even under 200 for it to even make sense. I have an offer on the table for two twenty now that she's not taking. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he would take more like two forty, maybe a little less. Is that cash though? Yeah. Okay, so you got a two twenty cash offer on the table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you got two twenty cash on the table, I mean that's that's a pretty good offer. I I just don't see. I just don't see anybody else doing much more than that. I mean, that's even that seems a little high to me. I'm just, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just strictly look at the numbers, you know. So I look at, okay, well, what's it going to cost me to fix? I got to factor in closing costs, carrying costs, commissions. Want to make a little bit of money on it, you know? Where's that put me? And okay. that puts me like down when I run my math. That puts me down around 190, 200 as a to make it a deal. Now maybe yeah. they're maybe they're thinking they'll 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 I don't know, add square footage, but you can't really add square footage. You can change floor plan around. It's going to spend some money, but you can't really add square footage unless you do additions, right? Okay. So um, I don't know. How legit do you think that 220 offer is? Oh, it's legit, definitely. Okay. And by the way, I forgot to mention, I'd let you represent me on an offer. Okay. So are you allowed to do that right for me? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So you could write for me, get the get the buyer side commission. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, man, I just I'm, if I look at two twenty, what would I? I don't know how I would make that work. You know. She um, won't even accept two twenty. I know. <laughs> over time, 
things change. So yeah, yes. She turned forty-five cash and should have taken that. And then yeah, the she should have. Yeah. Well, she, she, she didn't. So it's a little frustrating, but. I you know, bet. So. I mean, that's a two forty-five cash. I would have. She should have taken that and ran. I mean, there's just no comps to support that it getting more than that. I mean, I'm looking at one right now that to me feels comparable. A two-one that sold for one ninety on on uh, Dunbar. You know where that is? Right by there. Okay. There's another one here on that looks more like this. A two-story on Luffberry. It it was. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I just look it up here. This one got 198. And it's, yeah, and it's, it's, to me, it looks even cleaner than yours. Like it's the cabinets look okay. I mean, it's, it's just south of French Street. So it's on the other side of that road, but it's real close to you. Okay. John Bard, what was the other one? So, uh, what did I say? Let me look right here. So this one's super close. This is Dunbar, 77 Dunbar. It even has a garage. Wait, give me the other one. Also. The other one was uh, Luffberry. So 41 L-U-F-B-E-R-R-Y, Luffberry. And it's a two-story. Now, I don't think it's got as big a lot, so maybe there's some more value there, but it, it got 198. These are sold, 198. Oh, there's a vacant lot being sold separately. Yeah. But then, like, if you look at um, this is the one I really like. If you look at Seven Henry, Seven Henry got 265. It's 86422. But it's sharp looking. You know, it's got a nice little, it's got a nice little curb appeal. But it's in there a little tight. Like you don't have much of a yard there. Like you're. What number, Henry? Uh, seven. seven. Yep. But it's same square footage, but it got, it got, and it, but it's, I mean, nice big porch. And then you go inside and you got wood floors, you know, good size kitchen. It's cute. It got 265. This one's got no pictures or maybe it does. It's got four. Uh, let me go over to this one. Uh, there's no pictures on that one. Or maybe you can yeah, find them. Really bad shape if there's no pictures. So. Yeah, but I mean, it sold good though. So, but look at this one here. Look on 45 Ambrose. 45 Ambrose. That got 285. Now they're calling it a four bedroom, but I don't know how you get four bedrooms on 884 feet. <laughs> it's going to be pretty small rooms. But it's a ranch. There's no pictures of the inside, but that got 285. So you know, even if I even if I bump my numbers to two eighty five, All right? Well, she's not going to take it, so you're wasting time. Yeah, I realize that. Okay. I'm just I'm just, you know, if it's helpful, if I were you, I would present my two hundred offer and say, hey, I got another I got another investor. He's cash two hundred. I know they're going to say no, but it helps you because it gets the seller thinking they need to come down, and it helps you get a reduction at least. Right, right. And then if you get that thing down, I mean, if you get that thing down closer, to, if you get that seller down closer to 220, maybe I can relook at it and figure something out. But right now I'm kind of like around that 200 number. All right. I will let her know that. Yeah. But let her know. Say, hey, I got another offer. They're even lower. They're 200. What do you think about doing it? Because you're at 270. I think it's just going to sit at 270. Yeah, I agree. You know, what was your name again, sir? Jerry. Your last name, please? Norton. Okay. And this is my cell phone. I mean, please save it and keep in touch with me. If you if you feel like that seller's ready to make something happen, you know, let me know. All right. Because again, I'll let you write for me. So it's, you know, you want me to get it. It'll be better for you too. Right. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, it's a challenge this one for sure. Yeah, it's a little tricky. It's not it doesn't have the the best curb appeal either, you know. I don't really I'm not really digging that that kind of roof line barn style. Oh. But I like the lot. Yeah. It needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of work. I mean, I'm looking at what this picture here looks like a roof repair in that room. 
Where is that? In the, I saw it. Yeah. Are you right. far away? Are you in another state? Yeah, I'm not from the area. Uh-huh. But that doesn't matter to me. I like this, I like this area, so I'm trying to find a deal over here. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. Yeah, do you have anything else for sale? Um, I'm trying to work on uh, trying to sell a piece of land, but. Yeah, if you get something that looks distressed, you know, investor, let me know. Okay, sure. I sure, sure will. All right, I'll okay. talk about this. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. I All right, keep me posted. Talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you, bye. Bye. Okay, so man, that blows my mind. How could you have a 240 cash offer or even a 220 cash offer? But the market right now is really wacky. So there are a lot of buyers that are that are cash, but they're not really investors. They're not following a formula because I just I'm not seeing. I don't know how you could make any money paying 220 or for sure not 240. But buyers maybe are you have a lot of live-in flippers right now. What's cool is you can wholesale for some really good money. I mean. I wanted to get this thing for 190 and there's, she mentioned two buyers, 240 and 220. So, you know, anywhere 200, 210, we could probably wholesale this thing for 10, 20 grand if we could get our hands on some local cash buyers over there. So pretty exciting to kind of see the market that strong. There's no inventory again, uh, but makes it hard to get a deal. So in this case, I hope you kind of saw how I positioned myself. She is motivated to work with me because I'm letting her represent me. So. She's gonna go to bat for me and try to keep me informed on the deal more than likely. And I mean, did you notice she was kind of like, you're wasting my time, which I was, <laughs> because I'm at 200 and the seller said no to 220 and 240. So the seller's nowhere in the right ballpark. But what I find is I wanna try to educate my agent. So she was like, you're wasting my time, but I was kind of like, hey, why don't you listen to me? Let's look at comps. If I believe if I can help an agent understand what's going on. Now you would think the agent would know how to do this, but she's clearly way overpriced. And the seller thinks that this thing's worth way more than it is. The only way I can get agents to really go to bat for me is I've got to get them to be on the same page as me. Cause then they can go to the seller and they can say, Hey, you know what? Look at this comp. Look at this comp. We got to start really realistically looking at this thing. Let's, let's drop the price. Let's drop the price. So I said to her, I said, look, my $200,000 offer, you may think it's a waste of time, but you're looking at this all wrong. If you go to the seller and say, I got another cash offer, this one's at 200, the seller's gonna be going, I've said no to 240, I've gotten a 220, now I got a 200, I'm at 270, maybe I should lower the price, which benefits the agent because the lower we get the price down, the quicker it's gonna sell and she's gonna make a commission. And she got that, I said that to her and she understood that. So she's like, yeah, I'm gonna call the seller. And then I also said, hey, if you get this thing down closer to 220, you know, let me know. Let me know, I might be able to do something. Now, the only reason why I said that was because she mentioned a 240 cash offer. So if there's buyers in that market willing to pay 240 for this thing and I can get it for 220, then I know right there I've got a nice spread on a wholesale. Now, I don't know who that 240 buyer is. Maybe it's an outlier, maybe that's not legit, who knows. But it, I wanna keep it alive with this agent and I want her calling me once that seller becomes motivated. That's my job. I may not get this today, but I play the long game, right? I want to build these relationships so that this agent calls me back. Maybe that 220 goes away. Maybe the 240 goes away. Maybe the seller one day wakes up and says, hey, I want this thing gone. She calls me and I get it for 200. So I keep it in play. I want to keep the thing alive as much as I can. Or she calls me with another deal. That's the other benefit of calling these listing agents and working this angle. Okay, so guys, I hope that was helpful. Uh, doesn't look like it's going anywhere today, but we'll see what happens over time. Now, um, if you wanna get my deal analyzer I, uh, that I, you saw me use to break down the numbers, I'll give that to you for free again. That's mydealanalyzer.com. And I wanna tell you one other thing. If you guys find a good deal and you feel like you've got a deal that's in formula and it's a great deal to flip, I'm interested in buying that deal. I wanna be your buyer. Uh, I've got capital, I've got systems, I'm looking for deals, I do it anywhere in the US, and I will pay you $10,000 for every deal you bring me. Now I've got a training that's about 45 minutes long that you can watch and get all the details about how that works. 
just go to my10kcheck.com and you can register for that training and learn all about it. So my10kcheck.com, be a finder for me, get $10,000 for every deal. If you haven't yet guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel. This is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping and I'll see you on the next video.